what we're going to be going over here is absorption costing and we're going to look at this absorption costing in terms of what goes into our inventory here is costs. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, absorption costing, it's one of the inventory valuation methods and we really have four of them here. So in terms of the inventory cost or what is being capitalized in our inventory, the least amount here is based on throughput costing and then we have to direct or variable costing and then we get down to full absorption costing or that's what we're going to be looking at here and the inventory cost here would be a, a third down here or it would be more than the average amount direct variable and full absorption here are sort of in between the least amount here and the most amount okay so in terms of absorption costing here what we're, this is where we're going to be looking at what we include here in our inventory, what we capitalize in our inventory versus what we expense here. So for our costing here, we have our direct materials, our direct labor, and our factory overhead, both the variable portion and our factory overhead, the fixed portion. They are all going to be included in our inventory cost here. So those are the amounts that are going to be capitalized in our inventory. And then the only thing that's going to be expensed here is all those selling and administrative, both variable and fixed portions here. When I talk about selling and administrative, I mean all the support functions that go into our production operations here. It could be research, development, engineering, and so forth. But just lumping them all together here. All those support functions here are going to be expensed when they occurred here. All the other factory costs here, direct materials, labor, and uh, factory overhead, both variable and fixed, get included in your inventory and capitalized. Okay, so let's go and let's look at the cost flow here for absorption costing. So we'll look at this cost flow and then we'll go down and look at setting up or determining our operating income or our income statement here for absorption costing. So what we have here, we have all those factory costs, direct material, direct labor, and the overhead, variable and fixed. They're going to be included here and they're going to be going into our work and process, our finished and then our finished goods. So those are going to be all asset amounts here. That's our inventory amounts here. And then they're going to, those are going to flow into the cost of goods sold here at the end of the period based on our sales and they're going to be expensed there. Okay, so all those factory costs here are going to be included in our inventory. And again, what is going to be expensed here for the period would be all those non-manufacturing support functions here, selling and administrative costs. Those are not going to be included in our inventory here, but they're going to be expensed here as period costs here. They're not included in the cost of goods sold, they're just period costs that we expense. So just looking at our cost flow here, all those factory costs going back to those again here, direct materials, direct labor, fixed and variable factory overhead here. Those are accumulated and those will be our total manufacturing costs. They're gonna flow into our work and process here, inventory amount, and then we'd start with our beginning work and process, add to it all those total manufacturing costs, sag, subtract out any ending work and process, that's going to be our cost of goods manufactured here. Then those cost of goods manufactured going into our finished goods, we would add, or you start out with your beginning finished goods, add to it all those cost of goods manufactured, and then we'd subtract out our ending finished goods. That's going to give us our cost of goods sold. So then we get to our cost of goods sold, and that's going to be expensed against, uh, matched against our sales here for the period. And then again, all those non-manufacturing costs, selling and administrative, all those support functions, they're not going to be included in our in our inventory or they're going to be expensed here as period costs. Okay, so now let's look at our income statement here in terms of the cost flow that we just went through here. Again, for absorption costing. So we really got six different steps here. So we'd start out with the direct material that we've used here. Just take a beginning amount here of material and a beginning balance, add to it any purchased material here for the period subtract out in any ending material that we have on balance and that is going to be our direct material that we've used then our manufacturing costs just take our direct material and then add to it our direct labor and the variable and fixed overhead here factory overhead uh, we would again both variable and variable and fixed factory overhead that's going to be our total manufacturing costs so for our gloss to goods manufactured just take those total manufacturing costs, add to it the beginning work and process, subtract out any ending work and process. That gives us our cost of goods manufactured. Okay, so now for our cost of goods sold here. Take your cost of goods manufactured, add to it the beginning finished goods, subtract from it the ending finished good. That gives you your cost of goods sold. 
And now we get down to we are what they refer to as our gross margin here. Just take your sales for the period, all your sales, dollars here, and you have to subtract out at the cost of goods sold here. That's going to give you your gross margin here. So now for our operating income, we just take our gross margin, and this is the case where we subtract all those selling and administrative expenses here from our gross margin. That gives us our operating income. Okay, so you can see here this gross margin, that includes all the manufacturing costs here. And then we to get down to our operating income, you have to deduct all the non manufacturing costs. Okay, so that would be our income statement here for absorption costing. And this income statement, again, was based on this cost flow here. You just relate it to the cost flow here for absorption costing and so you can understand how we got our income here from started with and we determined our operating income here. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic here for absorption costing as one of the inventory valuation methods.